Hello, PaleoFX tribe. I know, I know you guys are sick of seeing me. <laughs> you're sick of hearing me talk, but you're not sick of seeing the cool guests. I know that. And I know for sure that you're going to dig this next guest up here. Pretty much everybody recognizes who this is. That's Mr. Chris Cresser sitting on the other side of the screen for me. Chris, how you doing, sir? I'm great, Keith. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Chris just told me before we went live that he just got back from a 10-day detox. Uh, I'm sorry, electronic a, detox. Let's qualify that electronic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it actually wasn't another kind of detox. I was probably eating more chips and salsa and drinking more margaritas than usual, but it was a digital detox. Digital I, I detox. Completely off the grid for 10 days. We, uh, I was down in Todos Santos, which is like an hour north of Cabo on the Pacific side of Baja, doing some surfing and just enjoying life without technology. Wow. So let, let me ask you, because so I think I've gone seven days with no technology and that was kind of a weird uh, transition back in. What, what is the transition like? So you just did a, a 10 day detox and now you're bam, doing a face. Right back. So right. I, yeah, I've learned over time that I need a, a couple of things to make it work. So number one is, uh, you know, when I first started doing these, I would come home to an email inbox of like 3000 messages. And that was just stressful, you know? Right. Um, so now what I do is I have an autoresponder on my email and it says I'm away, you know, doing a digital detox, getting, taking some much needed time. And uh, this, e you know, this email is, is going to be deleted. <laughs> and uh, if you need help right away, here's my assistance contact information. Otherwise, please resend your email when I get back, uh, if, if it's important. And it was kind of a big deal for me right. to do that uh, the first time I did that. And I, I was a little worried about how people would respond to the, the being told that their email had been deleted. It was the only way I could figure out how right. to come back to a zero inbox. Um, and, and quite the op. I mean, I don't. If people are pissed off about it, they haven't told me. But in fact, right. the first few times I did it, the opposite was the case. I, I a few people made a point of emailing me after I returned and said, "That was. I'm stealing that. I'm totally going to do that the next time I go away." And I'm, you know, that was awesome that <laughs> you did that. So, so that was one thing. You know, when I came, went back right. online on uh, last. Uh, on Monday today, I had no emails in my inbox. So it was just like starting my, you know, normal work day. That um, is a fantastic idea. And yeah. I am going to steal that, but it, it, it's true. People will get it. They understand. And, and I, so the, the couple of times that I have been able to check out completely, I, I get it. You, you're checked out, but at the same time, in the back of my mind going, I, I can almost hear the, the ticker counting the number of emails that are back there. Back <laughs> yeah. <to the> right. <laughs> yeah, it's totally anxiety producing. You can't really enjoy your time away. And then it's almost not worth it when you have to deal with that, you know, right. huge amount of emails when you come back. So that was a game changer. Another thing is that I always schedule a couple of days of transition time now. I, I used to do it like okay, I'm coming back Sunday night and I start work on Monday morning. <laughs> and that just doesn't work for me. Right, uh, right. And so like we came back on Friday night and I had the weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday to kind of like gently transition back into right. my, my normal life. And I find that that makes a huge difference. Uh, it, it, and, uh, you know, we just don't, we'll, we'll cut the trip one day short if we have to, to make that transition time. Um, possible because it just makes all the difference in terms of coming back into it. Right. And how long, Chris, did it uh, did it take you not to reflexively reach for your phone? Well, each time I do this, it's faster and faster. And now, right. Keith, to be honest, the bigger issue is what happens when I come back, <laughs> and you know, like how long it takes me to get back into the swing of things, and right, and, you know, just feeling a kind of almost. I mean, I love what I do. And so right. it's not it's not a sense of dread about like, oh, geez, back to the grind, because I'm totally passionate right. about what I do. But, you know, they, we live in such a fast paced, hectic world. And, and when I, I have, you know, after 10 days of like laying in a hammock and surfing and <laughs> 
taking walks on the beach and just having a much a totally different pace um it's it can be it's pretty jarring to come back so it's actually harder for, it's harder for me to come back to it now than it is to to you know i within a half a day i'm i'm generally good <laughs> without right right social media yeah well, I, I could talk about uh, vacations all day long with you, sir, and <laughs> surfing as well. Another subject. We'll have to do a Facebook Live totally on surfing. Yeah, so, that'd be fine. Uh, that would be cool. But let's talk about Cresser Institute and what you guys are doing at Paleo FX this year. It's funny, Chris, last night, I just want to throw this out to you. Last night, Michelle and I were looking for a video to play as the opening for uh, for the Paleo FX intro. And we happened upon the very first video that we all did together at the very first Paleo FX. Oh, wow. That's yes, cool. and it was. <laughs> it was. We all looked so young, Chris. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Time passes. Right, time time does pass, and we've done good work. And it's mm -hmm. uh, and I say we, all of us in this whole in this whole sphere, in this whole paleo sphere, we've changed so many lives, and we've grown so big. Um, and part of that is people like you who are constantly innovating and thinking of new ways to affect people. One of those being through your coaching programs, and I'd like to touch on that just a little bit. Yeah, so um, we last year we launched the health coach program um, in June, and that first cohort is just finishing up. They'll be finished in May, and that for me it came out of a, a growing recognition that um, we're never going to reverse the chronic disease epidemic um, without addressing diet and lifestyle factors. I mean, that's so obvious to anyone watching this. Probably, it's right. not worth saying. But then the question is, how do we do that? Because the CDC statistics say that only 6% of Americans um, uh, maintain the top five health behaviors. And we're talking about simple stuff here, not smoking, not drinking excessively, maintaining a healthy body weight, um, getting enough sleep and getting enough exercise. We're not talking about you know intermittent fasting and keto and, and cold, you know, hot and cold, and not some of the more advanced stuff we, we talk about in this community. We're just talking about the absolute basics. Six percent of Americans do that. And it's not because they don't know that those things are good. Yeah, certainly there's some controversy, low carb versus low fat, et cetera. But most people know that donuts and cheese doodles and big gulps are not good for them. They know that sitting for you know 16 hours a day is not good for them. They know that smoking cigarettes is not good for them, and they're still doing it. So it just you know it's become clear to me that the it's not an information problem. Right. It's a behavior problem, and so what we've been trying to do to solve it is give people more information. And you can't solve a behavior problem with information. And that's where right. health coaching comes in. Health coaches are experts at behavior, at behavior change and supporting people to change their behavior. They're not just telling you what to do. They're actually working with you using all kinds of techniques and modalities like motivational interviewing and positive psychology and um, understanding the stages of change to actually support you in making that change. And so that's, that's really where my passion has been over the past couple of years. It's so true. It's, it's getting people to take the actions they know they need to take. And that that's with the average person. And I, I've worked with athletes my entire life up until a couple of years ago, really. And it's the same thing. Yeah. I mean, even high level athletes know what they need to do, but they won't do it a lot of times Absolutely. until they're coached and prodded to do it. So, right. and you know this, Keith, that a lot of times they've reached that that those levels almost in spite of those. They they just have they found Absolutely. workarounds, you know, that right. have allowed them to get past that. Right. That's totally it, it's totally true. Um, yeah. And there's very few uh, LeBron Jameses out there who are both yeah. talented and will of their own volition do right. the work on top right. of it. Very yeah. very few. And I mean, the, the interesting thing about this for me is is how is you know we we like to look at things through the ancestral lens, you and I, and in the paleo community. And uh, if you think about something like food and diet, um, in a, in our ancestral environment, food scarcity was the biggest problem. So you know we didn't have like a Costco and a Seven Eleven on every corner. It was, right. There were times where we couldn't access food, and so we have all of these hardwired biological mechanisms that cause us to seek out 
highly rewarding and ca- you know calorie dense foods because that would have that was protective in a natural environment. Right. But when you when you you know drop us the same human biology and physiology that we have now into our current modern environment where we ha- are surrounded by an abundance of highly calorie dense and rewarding foods that that biological programming backfires on us. And so the thing that's interesting to me is like if the modern environment basically sets us up to fail. And so it's it's not really an individual problem, meaning, I mean, I mean, certainly we're responsible for our choices as individuals, but it's important, I think, to understand that we're fighting an uphill battle. Right. In any way, you know, in, in this modern environment, it's totally mismatched from right. what our genes and our biology expect. And so this is where health coaching can be so helpful because it's a way of, of recognizing that and then implementing strategies in your life, everything from how you set up your environment to how you change your habits and you know uh, un- unwind bad habits and create new healthy habits um, to actually even how you relate to yourself in that whole process that is what makes the difference between someone who's successful with behavior change over the long term and someone who is not. Right, right. Um... And I would agree wholeheartedly with the with the environment thing about if, if you're going to change a habit, it's almost a necessity that you do something to change your in, your environment because we're operating in the sub or subconscious so much, um, and your subconscious is set by your environment, all the cues, all the prompts, all the all the everything, and you're just running on autopilot unless you're. Unless you change your environment for the better, it's very, very difficult to institute any kind of habit change. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's a kind of mutual relationship there. Our, our um, efforts to change uh, are influenced by our environment strongly, but at the same time, there are certain aspects of our environment that we're not in full control over. Right. So for it's exposure to light, for example, or air. Right. And, and so there are certain, th- I, that's why I think behavior change becomes even more important because there, you know, it helps us to navigate even those, those parts of the modern lifestyle that we can't really change necessarily, unless we're really going to, you know, not only go to Baja, but like go live in a cave in the Himalaya or something like that. Right, right. Makes it much, much more difficult to be able to pull off. Yeah. Um, but your uh, the Crestor Institute booth at Paleo FX. If someone is interested in coaching, I, I'm assuming that they're going to get all the information they could ever ask for if they swing by the booth. And, yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, we have a, a, a big booth there this year. We've had a booth um, for the last few years, and it's just a fantastic opportunity for us to get to know people, to uh, find out more about their needs and what they're looking for, and then to share more about how our programs might be able to help. And we're going to have, we have enrollment advisors who are going to be at the booth at all hours during the day. These are actual uh, coaches that are in the program now, so they can speak directly from their personal experience with the program. Um, and we, and, and, you know, tell people, answer people's questions about it. I'll be in and out of the booth and we're going to have a posting of when I'm going to be there. Uh, and, and other staff members will be able to answer uh, everybody's questions. There's also a, a couple of workshops that I'm going to be doing on motivational interviewing at the booth. It, this is really where the rubber hits the road. It is in the in in the coaching, right? You and I both know that if more information were the issue, we'd all be billionaires with six pack abs. I mean, that's an often, but it's it's true. And more information is not going to do it. You have to. Either number one, yourself, figure out a way to take action, or better yet, number two, find a coach who is good at being able to coach actionable stuff. Yeah. Not just tell you what to do because not we've just, got, yeah. we've, we've, that, we got doctors for that, and that's appropriate yeah, that, sometimes. You know, <laughs> right. if, if you get a cancer diagnosis, maybe even not then, but you know, like there's certain if, if your appendix is ruptured, you want you don't probably want a coach to kind of ask you how you, you know, uh, like to, 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 ask you about your motivation for change and you know to, to you want a doctor to tell you what to do in that situation that's great. right right uh, for lifestyle and behavior change no you you actually um need 
a different approach, not just to be told what to do. Um, and we all know that. I mean, who likes being told what to do? <laughs> it's not an effective strategy. If someone tells me what to do, I, you know, I can be a little stubborn and, and bullheaded. But if I reach that conclusion on my own, it's a different story. And I have a seven-year-old uh, daughter. I can tell you that that any and anyone or any parent knows, <laughs> knows that that's the case. <laughs> Telling them what to do doesn't work. Right. No, you better find another way to do it. Yeah. Um, and and yes, the trying to worm into a a person's mind and figure out what their what their motivations are, what their cues are, what gets them what will inspire action in them is a, that is a skill. And that is a skill people can learn. Um, and, and to your, to your point, the, uh, the motivational interview uh, series, this, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the work of uh, Dr. Fred Navarro, who is in the, the Bay area, but he's done so much research on this, that the way you present information to certain groups of people totally changes the outcome. Absolutely. And, Right. And so, you know, the way Chris said I might coach you is totally different than I say would coach Michelle. It, yeah. Same information, same outcome I want, but I'm going to have to present it yeah. in two different ways. Yeah. I mean, yeah. an example I always use uh, with this is if you imagine a, like a middle aged woman who's just been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And, you know, the doctor says, okay, you got to get on an exercise program and eat right for your, you know, cause, cause you need to get healthier. You're going to have problems as you get older. And she leaves the office and has maybe good intentions, but nothing ever happens. Right. Then it with a coach, you know, working with a coach, the coach starts asking her questions about what's important to her and finds that she just had a new grand, you know, grandchild born and she just adores her grandchild, granddaughter. Right. And, more than anything else, wants to see her grow up and wants to, you know, survive and be at her college graduation and be able to play with her as she gets older. And and the coach finds that through, you know, helping her, this uh, client connect to that motivation, which is really important to her, more important than her own health or, you know, for her own sake or in her own well-being, that then she is able to find the motivation to, to change and to stick with that change. And so, you know, that's just one example of where motivation, motivational interviewing can be so powerful. Right, right. And the percentage of people who will change given information, given compelling information, is the smallest percentage of all of those buckets that you can look at. Yeah, I, I read it's a interesting on that that just blew me away. I, I mean, you're <laughs> probably not surprised by it, but it, I, I, I think uh, the number was so... You, they, they track people who had a heart attack already, you know, and, and the doctor basically said, hey, look, you've had a heart attack. These are the changes you need to make or you're going to have another one. And even in that case, only uh, less than one in seven people right. made the changes. So, I mean, that's about as big of a wake up call as you can get. Right. You just right. had a heart attack. And yet still after that, um, less fewer than one in seven people are able to make the necessary changes to you know, to reduce the risk of that happening again. So if that doesn't tell you that it's, you know, not just about information, nothing will. Right. And it, it is so true. And you see, you see, again, just someone who's been involved in coaching his entire life, I, that is, that plays out in real life. You can show people all the evidence in the world why they should do a certain habit or, or change a habit and you will get crickets back unless you present it in the, in the correct manner. Just, and, and again, it's a skill that can be taught. Cresser Institute does a very, very good job at teaching these skills. And believe me, this is such a needed skill profession. I don't, I don't know what we want to call it, but I, in the next few years, I do see a class of, I don't know if you want to call them coaches or coaches is kind of a watered down term now. I, I don't know what that person is going to be called, but they're going to be very integral to the new healthcare paradigm that we're going to be moving I into. Yeah, I mean that's that's the writing on the wall, and that's that's why we launched this program. And I think we uh, we simply won't be able to get where we want to get to without having health coaches. I mean, they, right. they're 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 the um, on the cutting edge. They're going to be the ones who are actually out there in the trenches, working with people to make these changes. Um, and because there, there'll never be enough doctors to address this problem. Right. And even, even if there were, 
they they don't have the training to help people to support people in behavior change. We need to keep right. them focused on the things that they are trained to do, right. procedures right. and diagnosis and prescriptions. They don't have the time or the training to do this kind of work with patients, and it's not the best use of their time. So that's where the health coach comes in. Right, and we've talked about this before, Chris. It's the it's the whole lifeguard uh, swim coach analogy. Yeah, we, we need swim coaches. We need lifeguards for sure when that when that need arises. But we can't have the we can't have the lifeguards being you know acting as an ad hoc swim coach. That just that's right. You know, you're going to need a lot more lifeguards if you don't have swim coaches. Which right, is, and and you're not going to show the. Re- and you're not going to show the results because the people never learn how to swim. How far can we take this <laughs> this metaphor out? But it, it's, it's we're, so drowning. we're drowning. <laughs> we're, dr- we're drowning in this metaphor. Yes. Chris, is there is there also um, so so if I come on and I become a uh, a health coach through the Cresser Institute, is there a way by which you pair me with a with a practitioner, or how does is there? We certainly aim to. Um, to be able to support that in the future. I mean, we certainly can't guarantee a pairing uh, just because of logistics, you know. Right, right. But, but we, because I also train practitioners in functional medicine and train them on why they need health coaches and how to use health coaches in the future, we are definitely going to have lots of networking opportunities, both online and in person. We're planning uh, our first in person conference uh, for Cresser Institute for, for in 2020. So we can get coaches and clinicians together and meet each other. We're planning some online groups to facilitate that kind of connection. And that's something we're really excited about because we're the only um, organization that trains both practitioners and coaches in the same functional and ancestral uh, approach. I love it. And this is this is a kind of paradigm busting idea and methodology that that we need um to, yeah, to get it out of healthcare morass I'll, I'll just drop one more stat on you but before we leave 71 percent of 17 to 24 year olds are not fit for military service and that is even before the physical fitness portion of the exam and that is largely because they are over fat um or are on medications or have some kind of a preventable illness, which I think if that is not a wake up call that we are doing things wrong currently, that's it. I mean, this is a trickle uh, yeah. down to our youth. Absolutely. And, and that's just, I mean, that's even just basic function. We're not talking about optimal function and, right. and right. reaching our full human potential. We're just talking about not being sick, you know? <laughs> And, right. and so I think we can aim higher than that, that, that go beyond right. just not, not, you know, avoiding illness, but actually f- fulfilling our full human potential. And that, that requires, you know, strength and health of both body and mind. So right. that's what, that's what we're all here to do. All right. Well, Chris, I will let you, uh, I will let you get back so you can, um, you said you did, you haven't unpacked yet from your last trip, yeah. so that's good. So Maybe I'll just uh, bring my, yeah, I'll show up in tr- swim trunks and sandals and, and a hat. Hey, there's, there's no dress code, brother. You can show up ever how you want to show up. Show up. <laughs> I'll be there. I'm looking forward to it, my man. It is, it is Austin. It is Austin. We, we, casual, we keep it weird. So, right. and um, I can even bring my surfboard as we've talked about before too. Absolutely can. Yeah. Right. Surf, surf's up in the ATX, brother. Yeah. All, All right. right. Everybody, when you're coming in for Paleo FX, make sure you drop by the Cresser Institute uh, booth and find out all about their host. Their health coach. It's been a long day, Chris. Their health <laughs> coaching <laughs> options. <laughs> Trump by and find out about their health coaching options. I'm telling you, this is the wave of the future, it, and it is such a satisfying experience when you change somebody's life. When you have actually mm-hmm. helped them. I mean, it's. I, I can't even uh, express how satisfying that is to help change somebody's life up close and personal. It's it, it really, really yeah. it is. It is. All right. Uh, all right, Good Chris. See you. see you in a few days. Yes, sir. Yeah. Stay travels, brother. All right, All right. FX yeah. crew. I am Bye-bye. signing out till uh, a little bit later tonight when we'll be talking uh, feng shui of all things. I can't even spell feng shui, but we're going to find out about it. It's awesome. going to be cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, 
Safe travels, Chris. Okay, Safe travels to everybody else out there in Paleo FX world who is traveling into Austin for this fantastic show. Get your tickets if you don't have them. If you're within a day's drive, we still have some tickets left. We have plenty of Expo tickets. If you're in Austin, EXPO50 for 50% off an Expo mm -hmm. ticket. Nice. Come on in. Local, local discount. Love it. Local discount. That's what we call home cooking, Chris Gresser. <laughs> All right. All, All right. right. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>